Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about the NSX... Nope, nope. Didn't like the finger point at all. Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the VMware Service Defined Firewall. Nope, it's the NSX Service Defined Firewall. Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about the NSX Service Defined Firewall. This is something I've been waiting for for a very long time, and I will save some of these suspense, and I'll just tell you right now, this is not a new product. It's actually just a new way to consume NSX if all you care about is the security components. Now, we'll be talking about all of that and more today. I'll be going over kind of a high-level overview of what it all is and what are the components. In subsequent videos, I'll be giving you guys a demo, and I might even get into the deployment. The good news is it's super simple, so I hope you guys like it. I'm excited. Let's jump right in. And if you're wondering why I'm about to magically change shirts with a snap of a finger, well, it's because I messed up my other intro. So cue shirt change. All right, so let's jump right in and let's talk about how NSX was done before Service Defined Firewall and how we can consume it now with the Service Defined Firewall SKU. So the old way of doing NSX was you kind of had one SKU, which I would call full NSX. That's what I usually refer to as meaning you're doing network virtualization, you're doing the distributed firewalling and all of that stuff. You basically have access to everything NSX has to offer. Now that sounds great until you see the price tag. It is pretty pricey. And I would argue that it makes a lot of sense and actually the cost is worth it for customers that will use all of the functionality NSX has to offer. Now, if you're only looking at it for the security functionality, then yes, super, super expensive. Now let's move forward to today. How can you consume NSX today? Well, today you still have that option. You still have the full NSX experience. You can still buy NSX with network virtualization and all of the security components bundled into one, and it's still fairly expensive. But we have a new option, and that is called the NSX Service Defined Firewall. This is basically a way that you can say, I only want the security features NSX has to offer, has to offer, and I'm not gonna use any of the network virtualization. I'm not going to create logical routers and switches or anything like that. I just want the distributed firewall, which is one option of the service defined firewall. The other option is called ATP, which is an add-on to that SKU. And that gives you access to IDS and IPS, as well as network detection and response, network traffic analysis. And all of that is under the umbrella of a recent acquisition VMware made, which is called LastLine. So to summarize it, service defined firewall leaves you with two options distributed firewall only or distributed firewall plus IDS IPS and the last line components integrated there as well. Now, the price is where things get really interesting. This is a lot cheaper than kind of the full NSX experience I just mentioned. So if you were like me and you were on the customer side and you had evaluated NSX and you said it's a little too expensive for our security only use case, this is a great, great new thing that you should absolutely be looking at right now. So kind of going down the path, let's talk about what actually makes up the service defined firewall. What are the actual components of it? Well, the first one is the distributed firewall. This is essentially a stateful firewall that is built into the hypervisor in the case of vSphere. Uh, for you doing bare metal, there's an agent that gets installed on the bare metal servers as well. And this is basically firewalling down to the vNIC of each individual VM. The next component is the distributed IDS IPS. This sits exactly where the distributed firewall sits and basically in a distributed manner. So now we don't have all those blind spots and all of that, uh, no hair pinning traffic to an IDS IPS. It's all completely in the data plane. As traffic is leaving that VM, it hits distributed firewall first, then it hits the IDS IPS and goes on its merry way. The best thing about this for both of these components, the distributed firewall and the IDS IPS, there's no dedicated appliance that sits on your host. It's not like a VM or anything. You won't have like a firewall VM and an IDS VM, nothing like that. It's all completely baked into vSphere itself. Now the last component to the service defined firewall is called NSX intelligence. This is really catered towards security operations teams. And it's essentially a way to visualize all of your environment from a security standpoint, more specifically from a network security standpoint so that you can understand where you're secure and where you're not. Now this is a relatively new feature within the NSX portfolio, but it is really gaining some traction and ultimately the way it works is it takes information from various data sources. So these data sources can be things like vCenter and NSX. It could also be things like vRealize Network Insight. 
And NSX Intelligence can actually make firewall rule recommendations based on all of that data it gathers. It can then say, I think you should create these groups and these firewall rules and move on your way. And you can actually click a button to go implement it in the NSX firewall. All right, so let's move on from here. Let's get a little more detailed. So let's look at this environment I have. In this case, I have a bunch of VMs here and I want you to focus first on the IPs. We have IPs right here on the 10, 25, 32 network. We have 32, five, six, and seven. If we go down here, we have some other VMs and they're on completely different subnets. If we look at that third octet there, they're all different. So essentially, the top row here, we have VMs that are on the same subnet, the same VLAN, same port group, however you want to word it, they're on the same network. And then below that, we have VMs that are on completely different networks. Now, this would be a nightmare if we were trying to do this with a traditional firewall, but with NSX, we can actually group these into logical constructs just like I have done here. So you see here, I have these two VMs that are on completely different networks. Well, guess what? Because I've tagged them with NSX as being on the test network, they are now subject to any policies that I've applied to the test environment. So my policy is actually really simple. My policy doesn't say anything about IP addresses. My policy says block test from dev and that's it. NSX will figure out and translate the rest under the hood. Another thing I wanna point out here is if we look at this, like I said, we have this VM 32.5 and 32.6 and 32.7. These are all in the same subnet. Without NSX, there's no good way to segment between these at all. With NSX though, super easy. In fact, it's the same process whether they're on the same subnet or not. And if I'm the one writing the policy, I don't even care about the IP of the VMs, honestly. All right, so moving on, one of the things that's really important about the service defined firewall, you don't need any network changes. Before, if you're doing the full NSX experience and you want overlay networking and all of the network virtualization functionality, yes, you need to make some MTU changes. You might have to create new VLANs, that sort of thing. With service defined firewall and just implementing the functionality I'm describing here, you don't have to change any VLANs. You can keep your routing the same way it is today. You can actually basically use those existing VLANs. So if you're using VLAN 20 for your web servers, keep using VLAN 20 with the NSX service defined firewall. Now, technically you will have to recreate a port group with that same VLAN, but that's really just more of a technicality. You're still reusing the same VLAN. You just happen to create a new port group in NSX. So moving on, as I mentioned, we can use those existing VLANs, which makes things really, really nice. And also across vCenter policies and rules are really, really simple. If you ever did this in NSXV, the older version, it was a little bit painful. We had this concept of universal objects and this sort of thing, and I'll save you the headache, but suffice to say, it was a headache. Now in the newer version in NSXT, specifically what we're talking about here, it's as simple as just adding the vCenters as a compute manager in NSX lingo. And once it's added, at that point, I don't care about the vCenter anymore. It's just a VM that is in my inventory and I can then add it to a group like I've done here. I have test, dev, and prod, and that's pretty much it. I'm off to the races. And by the way, the way that you add VMs to groups is something that can be really, really flexible. And it's something we will go over in this series. So that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the service defined firewall. In subsequent videos, I will be getting into the GUI and showing you a little bit more of how this works. So stick with me and until next time, stay nerdy.